Todd Obert, President and CEO of Productive Corporation. I am joined alongside me today, virtually, uh, physically, emotionally, um, with uh, technological compatibility, I would say. I think we make a perfect <laughs> uh, match for uh, techmatch.com if there was such a thing. There's got to be. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, we are here today, we're from Productive, and we are here to talk about the truth around data loss and give you guys some idea. Now, if uh, you've been on our broadcast before, you know who we are. If you have not, you know we have specialized in infrastructure, technology, storage recovery management, security uh, for quite a number of years. So we are going to bring with you, uh, talk to you about some of the hard lessons we've seen on site, as well as things to be thinking about <clears throat> in your um, kind of uh, DLP strategy, as it were. And, and if you don't have one, what you might want to consider. Pete's going to talk about that. But uh, before we allow him on the microphone, we are going to meet Productive in one minute. As we go out through our presentation, utilize that chat feature if you have questions and uh, we will get them answered. But as for now, we are going to roll on and roll ahead at uh, breakneck speed since we only have 30 minutes or less to get this bad boy done. So let's go. If you are ready, who is Productive Corporation? Wow, I am so glad that you asked. Productive is a security and storage software expert for mid-sized companies. We have a dedicated staff that's here to answer licensing, technical questions, help you with technical assistance. Get all the resources that you need <coughs> so you don't have to navigate that scary World Wide Web all by yourself. We also imp implement, test, and optimize the products that we sell. We do everything from security assessments to penetration tests to RTO, RPO, planning and assessment. We also install and optimize appliances as well as UTM devices and help all along that continuum with the products that we sell. We also produce third-party content designed to help you in the mid-market, right? Part of it's the knowledge series today. You can find that at ProductiveCorp.com backslash content as well as our YouTube channel. The bottom line is we have the resources to help you Help at ProductiveCorp.com. Whether it's implementation, assistance, optimization, licensing question, we are here to help you get a hold of us. That's why we do the things that we do. And one of the things that we do is uh, put on things like our knowledge series. Today we're talking about the truth around uh, data loss. And uh, <clears throat> a guy that has a lot of experience in that, um, not because he's lost all his data, but, you know, just because he's been in the business. Um, not to say that he hasn't lost a, a thing from, uh, you know, time and again, but, uh, you know, guys that are our age probably, you know, not only have we lost things, we've also lost our mind. So with that in mind, let's uh, give a warm virtual round of applause to our VP of Sales and Technology, Mr. Pete Greco. Pete? All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, I was going to say lost my marbles maybe. Uh, sometimes it, uh, it feels that way, especially when you are trying to wrap your head around protecting sensitive data. Um, right? So uh, thanks a lot for the uh, nice introduction, uh, Todd. Uh, definitely uh, after this we're going to have a meeting about uh, techmeetup.com, our uh, brand new uh, soon-to-be business venture, I'm, I'm guessing. But uh, for now, <laughs> for now, hey, it works. Well, Farmersonly.com works. Yeah, I suppose. I, yeah, absolutely. Why not? Uh, yeah. You know, let let your love of uh, of technology uh, spill over into your personal life. I haven't been able to work that out with my wife, uh, but uh, with uh, TechMeetup.com, maybe I can. So, <laughs> what are we going to talk about today? Uh, Information-centric security, when the content-aware plus context-aware, uh, right, merges. And so what, what are we really talking about? Now, a lot of folks, when they think about uh, data uh, or data leakage, um, they're thinking PII, they're going straight to credit card data, 
and, and this kind of stuff. And, and that is only part of it, right? And so what we're talking about is uh, an approach to information security that, that emphasizes the security of the information itself rather than the security of the networks or applications. Um, and, and so that's something that, that uh, you know, we need to think about. And we're not dispelling the notion that, uh, that you should get rid of your endpoint security, uh, get rid of your firewall. That stuff is absolutely still critical, um, right? You need that, that baseline, but we're at a whole new level, um, right? And so how can we defend against legitimate access or when a legitimate user becomes a compromised user? You know, how, how do you get started on, on defending against that? We need mechanisms and policies that consider the actual data and, and assist in enforcing those written policies. And depending on our data, we may need to have different ways of doing this, whether it's based on the file type or what's actually contained in the, in the file. Um, right? So as I go to this next slide, um, I bet almost everybody on this call's eyes goes straight to this middle section, compliance. And this is important. How do we protect? All right. Ho hopefully, this is an improvement. Todd's telling me I'm I'm breaking up. We're we're doing a switcheroo here uh, on uh, on headsets, and and uh, we'll see if we've created an improvement for you. Uh, let Todd know if uh, I'm hard to hear, though. So um, your eyes are going straight to the compliance section, and you're thinking, how do we protect against against socials, uh, credit cards, uh, PII, right? But what if you don't can uh, hold any of that data? We have a lot of customers that feel like, I don't really need to worry about this, Pete, because we don't hold uh, credit cards. We're not in the medical uh, game, so you know HIPAA doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, apply to us. I don't have any, uh, you know, any socials or, or anything like this. And uh, typically, um, they, they might be right on, um, but that's not the only important source of data. And, and when it comes to PII, most companies are at least holding the data of their employees. So every person that you hire, maybe even every person that you interview, um, right, typically might be forking over a, a social security number, uh, a home address, and lots of, uh, lots of information that you may not want leaked out. But what about other things that you're using to run your business, right, like uh, trade secrets and, and uh and, and plans and sales presentations and price books, um, recipes, uh, you know, if you're some kind of, of uh, chemical manufacturer or some kind of food manufacturer, um, right? Pretty much we don't engage with a business that isn't holding on to uh, certain kinds of, of data, um, right? And, and most organizations, if you went to them and said, hey, how about if we publish this price book on the Internet? or publish your, your plans for uh, 2016 on the internet, right? They're not going to want that to, to happen. So what are we going to do to to protect this kind of, of data, um, right? And this can be, uh, again, info that a trusted employee has access to um, that they're simply not handling properly. Um, and a great example here is uh, you create an encrypted file share, you, you create a written policy, we need to save these kinds of documents in this specific location. Uh, everybody hears the message, maybe somebody's out sick that day and they, they don't get the message, they don't read the document, um, right? I, I heard a, a guy say, uh, you know, our, our problem is, is um, we don't necessarily have a, a, the most literate workforce, i.e. they don't read every document that IT sends out to them. Uh, and I thought that was a, a great way of of, uh, of pointing out that that fact. So how do they, you know, how do they handle um, that that information? You want them to save it there, but they might save it on their workstation for quick access. Maybe I'm in the middle of working on this document. It does have uh, proprietary information. It does have sensitive data. It has information that we've obtained from, uh, you know, our, our biggest customer, our most important customer, um, whatever it might be. And my intent is to not be malicious. Uh, my intent is to get my job done the way that I'm expected to to get it done in a in a timely fashion, 
you know, using all of my wits to uh, to complete the task, um, but I'm now storing the the data in an inappropriate way, um, right? And so a lot of times you you might not uh, recognize that some of this data that you're holding is not your own uh, data, right? If you're a law firm, you're holding uh, data for your clients. If you are a uh, uh, medical uh, transcription or medical billing company, um, right? You're actually using the data of your client, which is uh, doctor's offices or or, uh, or law firms, um, right? And if you're a, a manufacturer, you're potentially holding um, a, a lot of uh, drawings or IP or, or this kind of stuff. And uh, Chuck, our, our marketing guy, had actually found this, uh, uh, this data on Kaspersky's uh, website, 21% of manufacturers hit by intellectual property theft in 2013. So one in five, or I guess a smidge over uh, one in five, is having data leaking out. And there's uh, been a couple of stories of where Chinese organizations have actually pilfered the R&D of American companies and then brought that American uh, that Americans uh, uh, R&D to fruition in the marketplace for uh, less because they didn't have the R&D cost uh, behind the behind the product, right? And these aren't necessarily Fortune 100 companies. Some of these are are small and mid-sized companies who are bringing innovative par pro products to uh, to the marketplace. So we need a methodology and a mechanism for being able to identify uh, data, and it can be based on file type. I, I want to make sure that spreadsheets get saved here or Word docs get saved here. Um, we definitely have to be aware of pattern recognition. Um, right, so I don't want to downplay the importance of that, um, but but that's really the base level of what everybody thinks about. Let's make sure that credit card number or or that list of credit card numbers don't leak out, the list of socials, email addresses, phone numbers, whatever it might be. But how do we take it to the next level, um, right? And and protect data based on what's inside the file and what the content is, um, you know, beyond just what the the file type or if it contains a, a pattern. You know, so yeah, yeah. Not to get too off track, but I mean, essentially, we've seen right, and we've done other other stuff on this that more of the risk is around these small and mid-sized organizations, right? The hacking community, as they've matured, has uh, gone into vertical markets to find yeah. IP in 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 more and more different uh, vertical industries. So a and, abs absolutely, Todd. And and the smaller you are, I would say, the more of a target you're becoming. And where it doesn't feel that way is when the the 80 employee manufacturing firm, or the 150 employee law firm, or the small doctor's clinic uh, gets hacked or has a breach or has an issue. You don't see it on ABC News tonight, um, right? When it happens to Target, it's in every magazine and it's in every uh, it's in every publication. It's on every news station. Um, but uh, that's newsworthy because Target has a a uh, nationally recognizable name, um, right? And so if it were to happen to Productive Corporation, we might not be on the front page of every paper across the, uh, across the country, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening. And that's, I think, the challenge um, that a lot of our customers run into. Um, this isn't an issue that our customers are saying, hey, hey, Pete, don't know what you're talking about. That's all, uh, you know, a, a bunch of hullabaloo that, that you're, you're putting out there. Um, we have a lot of folks that understand exactly what I'm saying, but they're having a hard time getting uh, budget approved because the ownership doesn't understand that uh, they might not make the news, but it doesn't mean that they're um, not at risk, right? Just like if my house gets broken into, um, probably not going to see that on the front page. If the bank gets robbed, that's going to be a news story that, that leads, right? So a real story, uh, and this is from... Uh, local organization here that that uh, uh, we're not going to name, but they're in the manufacturing uh, realm, and they make stuff for the power industry. And uh, pretty interesting conversation about what it's like managing some of their engineers. Um, and one of the challenges that they face is they actually have some engineers that have been working for the organization since before the current ownership uh, was even entering into adulthood, um, right? So this is a family business. The reins have been handed down uh, from generation to generation, and and there's some some folks that that the dad had hired uh, long before the kids were even in the in the workforce, and now they're they're running the company. So how do you get control over 
uh, some of these folks who are trusted employees. These, these aren't folks that they're worried about. They've been working for the organization for uh, 40, 45, 50 years, right? That's not an employee that you don't trust uh, for sure. But they have habits, um, right? They, they enjoy saving uh, CAD files and, and engineering documents on their local workstation because that's how they've always done it. Um, right, they were probably doing it before they had access to uh, file shares and before the cloud was even was even invented. Um, you know, and so now we're talking about controlling habit, um, right? And so, how do we first identify um, what that risk is, um, right? And and so for these guys, what part of the risk is is they've actually developed processes that allow them to manufacture um, their products using less material, which allows them to be more price competitive in the marketplace while still having a great solution. Well, they don't want that information leaking out uh, either overseas or locally, right? So how do you get control over, over that kind of stuff? And it starts with a written policy. Um, this is what you uh, need to do. This is why we do it. This is a requirement. And then we need to back it up with, with technology, um, right? That's going to allow us to control where data gets saved even for legitimate end users. And that's the area where the traditional protections, um, I don't want to say fall down, but they just don't cover it, um, right? So we provide VPN access. Um, and so now a legitimate user gets in. Um, but if that legitimate user is compromised, now that compromised user still has legitimate access, um, right? Someone poking around your file share or transferring data from a file share to a USB drive, well, that's not a virus, so it's not going to trigger your antivirus, um, right? And it's it's not an intrusion necessarily, so it may not trigger your intrusion prevention. Depends on what kind of technology they're using and how they've gained access, right? So how do we get control over that? How do we have a great document retention policy? You know, uh, uh, Productive Corporation, and, and me and Todd specifically, uh, I'll call us out by name, um, we don't like throwing stuff away, but the challenge that you run into now is old documents have zero value to the to the business, but may contain data that is still valuable for a hacker to use to try and compromise us, right? So those business plans from 2005 uh, may not help us at all, and, and referring back to that 10-year-old document uh, may do nothing other than uh, give us a nice trip down memory lane but it may contain information that allows, uh, allows us to be compromised, right? So rather than uh, keeping that stuff around that provides no value, how do we get rid of it and get rid of it in a, in a smart uh, and intelligent way? And so this is stuff that we'd like to help all of you folks strategize on and think about how do we help you get to the next level in first identifying what kind of data do you have, where is it located, where can it go? How do you want to be able to, to track who has access and what they're doing with that legitimate access, right? And then get it locked down so that it can't be removed from the environment or can only go to the places where you know that it's going or even just allow you to log so that you can track where that data is going. Maybe you don't want to restrict anything. Maybe the way that your business works actually restricting the movement of that data would be harmful but at least let's get visibility on where it's going so that if we have an issue, we know where to start, where to start with, um, right? And we have uh, a lot of great services and products that can help you really start uh, creating a practice that's going to help you not only get that network locked down, and, and still very important. I, I absolutely do not want to downplay um, the importance of, of gateway security, perimeter security, mobile device management, um, all this stuff, but it needs to work hand in hand um, with uh, both written and technical policies that help you get, uh, uh, you know, control of the content inside of those Word documents, spreadsheets, databases, whatever it, whatever it might be. <clears throat> hey, Pete. Yes. Yeah. So a comment kind of came across, right? <laughs> so it was, um, and, and I'll kind of paraphrase it, but right, isn't historic data, you know, valuable, a uh, valuable asset in, in knowledge management, um, in a knowledge management oriented organization. And, um, 
you know, that this also, you know, and then aside from that adds to the, the culture of the organization. Um, I, I mean, I would say, um, yes, document retention policy is deciding what is uh, a key asset and how to keep that and protect it. But there's a lot of stuff, transactional data that, uh, you know, your, uh, your organization should absolutely be thinking about how long do you want that around um, yeah. <laughs> uh, physically and electronically, for example. Correct. And, and there's exceptions to, to rules, um, right? And, and there's an evaluation of that data. So, you know, if you're a, if you're a programming uh, or a software company, um, right, keeping uh, historical copies of the, of the software um, might be a requirement um, so that you can see how things were originally built. So you can maybe you're, you still support previous versions. You might need to keep, keep that stuff around. But financial data from 2003, how, how does that help you? You've got your account numbers in there that might still be current and accurate, right? But all those checks that you cashed in 2003, they're not coming back on you now. If they haven't bounced by this point, they, they're not going to bounce, um, right? But you have this sensitive data. You have your, your QuickBooks backup, backups going back to 02, 03, 04. And if you're not required to keep it, what value does it provide? And then what is the length of time on that document retention? <clears throat> For some organizations, it might be three years. From some organizations, it might be seven years. But this is a, an area that, that we can kind of help you uh, dive into and really figure out what's the right kind of policy for you, and then how do you enforce it? Um, we we talked to a lot of folks, Todd, that, that have the written policy um, that everything I'm saying, they're like, right on, Pete, right on. Um, already way ahead of you, been doing it before you've been talking about it even, um, right? But but how do we enforce it and how do we get control over it then becomes the, the next step. So uh, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, we didn't invent this stuff, um, right? We're, we're listening to, to you folks and hearing what you're doing. Um, we're uh, really going in and strategizing with customers and, and continuing to, to come up with and refine best practices um, based on what's happening in the market and, and uh, exploits that we've seen and uh, areas where we've seen uh, companies have issues um, so that we can help guys devise, uh, you know, a best practice for their specific organization moving forward. The, the trick here is this is not a, uh, a one-size-fits-all uh, kind of conversation or, or discussion at the high level. It, it kind of is. But as you start really drilling down into, into individual organizations, even, you know, you talk to to five credit unions or five banks or, or five uh, uh, medical clinics or, or whatever it is, they're not all the same, lots of different challenges, um, lots of different kinds of data sets, even in like organizations that need to be considered and, and really figured out um, the most appropriate way to, to be dealt with. And the big challenge is, is we want to protect and we want to defend, but we also have to be available, um, right? The easiest thing to do here is let's just unplug all the, all the technology Nobody's hacking into, into anything, yet no new work is going to get produced either, um, right? So we got to find that, that good balance in the, in the middle of, uh, you know, as, as secure as we can be and as available as we need to be. Absolutely. Um, I got, uh, yeah, um, good stuff all around the horn, Mr. Pete Greco. Thankfully, um, as we were talking about uh, data leaking, that uh, you're willing to share your information uh, willingly and freely. Uh, you just, uh, you know, threw it out there for us, and we appreciate that. But I guess that I, was the intent, was to share. I adhere to FOIA, right, the Freedom of Information Act. You ask me anything, very forthcoming with it. Yeah, very free <laughs> to inform uh, anyone what he's thinking is what his Freedom I, of Information Act is. I'm like a data hippie, Todd, just free, free loving, but with data. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, uh, well, I'd love to put a hug around all those ones and zeros. So uh, that's, uh, that's what I like. So yeah, um, thanks so much, uh, Pete, for the great presentation. Thanks, everybody else, for taking the time. We know that uh, 30 minutes is, uh, you know, time that you are taking out of your day to spend with us. So we hope this was worthwhile, and uh, if you liked it, please uh, chat with our account execs about it. If there's something else you'd like to see, let us know. We put these on for your uh, benefit, and hopefully, uh, you know, continue to share that good knowledge out in 
the community that we are a part of. As for now, I am Todd Obert along with Pete Greco signing off, wishing you a fantastic balance of your day and week, and hope everybody has a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody.